Welcome to lesson one, where we'll be looking at the characteristics and functions of connective tissue. Last week, Rachel discussed that the bulk of epithelial tissue is made up of cells. Connective tissue differs from epithelial tissue in many ways, but primarily the bulk of connective tissue is made up of extracellular material. That is, the material that makes up the spaces between the cells. Connective tissue has three main classifications depending on the nature of the extracellular material. It is also dependent on the fibres and the specialised cells that we find embedded in this extracellular material. These three classifications are our connective tissue proper, which includes loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue, our specialised connective tissue types, which is our fluid connective tissue, blood and lymph, and our supporting connective tissue, which is bone, cartilage and bone marrow. It takes students quite some time to get their heads around the fact that blood and bone are forms of connective tissue. But if we look at both of these closely, we can see why. They are made up of specialised cells and secondly, they have an abundant extracellular matrix. These are the two main characteristics of all connective tissue types. In the case of blood, it's a more fluid matrix. And with bone, it's a calcified and hardened matrix. So they fit the characteristics of connective tissue. So we can say connective tissue is responsible for connecting one tissue to another, like tendon connecting a muscle to bone, transporting fluids and dissolved materials like blood, protecting and supporting delicate organs such as our heart and kidneys via connective tissue sheaths, storing energy reserves in the form of triglycerides in fatty connective tissue, otherwise known as adipose tissue, and defending the body from invading organisms, which is the role of lymph. Connective tissue also nourishes other tissues and has the ability to form new cells. As well as that, it is a vascular tissue, which means it has an abundant blood supply. This is especially important when it comes to epithelial tissue, which has no blood supply. It relies on the underlying connective tissue to provide the medium for nutrients to diffuse across the basement membrane to reach epithelial cells. Bone marrow, which is also a connective tissue, has a formative function. In other words, it forms new blood cells based on the body's needs. In this next segment, we will take you on a tour of the mouth for a visual demonstration of the characteristics and function of connective tissue. We are currently standing in the Dental Simulation Clinic, which is part of the dental school here at the University of Adelaide. In this dental simulation clinic, our dental students and our oral health students do all their preclinical training before they actually enter their clinical placements. The reasons why we brought you here is firstly, to take you on a tour of the mouth, and secondly, on this tour, take you through the different types of connective tissues that we can actually find in our oral cavity or our mouth. In our mouth, it is our visual example or the living example where we can see the different types of connective tissue so that you can actually understand what these tissues look like. And then you can actually apply that information as you go through the different lessons for the week. We have Johnny with us today, who's kindly volunteered his time. Hello, Johnny. Hi, everyone. What we're going to do is have a look at the different types of connective tissues, because in our mouth or our oral cavity, as it's called in the dental profession, we can actually see visual live examples of the different types of connective tissue and how they actually appear. So come and join me. Okay, so to begin with, what I'm going to do is just retract or move Johnny's lip. Whilst I'm doing that, you can actually see that we have some different textured looking tissue. The bottom here is actually quite see-through. You can see it's a little bit translucent and you can see all the little blood capillaries that are running through there. The tissue around the teeth here are actually quite firm and quite what we call stippled or textured. 
This tissue here that supports the teeth is actually what we refer to as dense connective tissue. You can see that it's thick and it's hard and it can actually withstand resistance. When we have a look at the tissue that forms the inside lining of our lip and this little base area here, it's actually quite transparent and quite loose. And this is what we refer to as loose connective tissue. It actually gives us the ability to move the lip and also gives it that resilience so that the tissues then can go back to the resting positions when you actually finish moving your lip. So straight away we can see there's a huge difference between dense connective tissue and loose connective tissue. We hope you enjoyed your tour of the mouth. Can you remember what some of those common characteristics of connective tissue were? Let's review these together. We mentioned that all connective tissue have specialised cells, extracellular protein fibres, and a gel-like ground substance that helps to suspend the cells and the fibres. It is important to remember that both the protein fibres and the ground substance are produced by these specialised cells. And just to clarify, the extracellular matrix is made up of the protein fibres and the ground substance collectively. So by reviewing these common characteristics of connective tissue, we can determine the difference between connective tissue and epithelial tissue. Firstly, by the number of cells versus an abundant extracellular matrix. Secondly, by the types of fibres that are embedded in this extracellular matrix. And finally, by the fact that most connective tissue has an abundant supply of blood, which is what epithelial tissue actually lacks. You are now ready to check your understanding on the characteristics and functions of connective tissue. Please proceed to your first knowledge test for the week. Good luck.